This deserves a celebration. We finally have a great photo editor for the iPad. It took a while, but better late than never. As you might have seen from the title, this great photo editor is Pixelmator Photo. What makes it so good? Several things, but the main one is that it does what it says on the tin. <laughs> I know it's a pretty low bar to clear, but that's how things are on the iPad, at least when it comes to photo editing. The competition there is quite low, there are only two really good photo editors on the iPad. The first one is Lightroom, which is almost as powerful as the desktop alternative, and the other one is Affinity Photo. Any other application will give you varying levels of frustration, either because of the technical issues you will face or because of the subpar feature set you have to work with. But even the main two applications have their issues. The main problem with Lightroom is that if you're not in the Adobe ecosystem, you will have to splurge for a subscription. But other than that, the application is top notch. For Affinity Photo, the issue is the clunky and messy interface and also how the whole workflow is handled. In a way, that is to be expected, since Affinity Photo is not only a photo editor, it's supposed to do much more than that. But the drawback is a visually overloaded interface, buggy tools, and a workflow that requires a lot of opening and closing windows and panels. But let's get back to Pixelmator Photo, and why it's perfect for photo editing. Like Affinity Photo and Lightroom, Pixelmator Photo is using the actual raw files of your camera to do the processing. That means working with the full dynamic range and the full resolution of the image. Most other applications on the iPad, like the very popular Snapseed, VSCO, and even Pixelmator, the company's generic image editor, are using a JPEG preview of the raw file. That means working with a low resolution file and also not taking advantage of the full dynamic range of your image. When I first discovered that, I was shocked. This huge oversight means that 80% of the applications out there are just toys and in no shape or form can be used for anything serious. But besides its raw editing abilities, one of the greatest aspects of uh, Pixelmator Photo is the next point. Along with Lightroom, this is one of the best interfaces for photo editing. All you need for your edits is available on the side of the screen. You just enable the options you want to work with and adjust them until you have the result you want. Nothing gets in your way and all the settings are very clear and responsive. Unlike Affinity Photo, which gets easily bogged down by really simple things. Let me give you an example. As I adjust the image here, the histogram updates in real time, so I can easily see what my adjustments do to the image. Affinity Photo, on the other hand, feels very slow and clunky. As I adjust the image, the histogram doesn't change at all. I need to let go first, wait a second or so, and then the histogram updates. This can easily drive you insane and can transform this really simple task into a really long process. Another small thing that makes a huge difference when you're trying to work with your images is the image selection process. In Pixelmator Photo, you can freely click through the thumbnails and have them open up full screen so you can see clearly if that's the image you want to edit. With Affinity Photo, you just have to rely on the thumbnail. Once you click on it, you're done. You immediately switch to the editing phase. This might not be a big deal if the images are completely different, but if you have to pick between a series of similar images, picking the right one is an exercise in futility. It's these small things in the UI that make a huge difference when working with the application. But enough about that, let's move on to our next point. All the settings available on the side of the screen are exactly the ones needed for a proper photo edit. Exposure settings, color balance, curves, levels, selective color which for some reason is missing in other editing apps, everything is in there. I didn't feel like I was missing something and actually everything is set up exactly how I would expect it. Let's do a quick edit and see how simple and fast it is. I was very happy to see that I can adjust the black and white image by adjusting the color values. This feature I've seen only in a couple of apps, but it's exactly how I would do it in Photoshop, so it's very nice to know that we can use the same process when we're on the go. I was also very surprised by the stamp tool. I wasn't really expecting it to do a good job, but it actually worked quite well. The exporting options are also quite good. We have the usual options like airdropping the file, saving to Dropbox, exporting to the camera roll and to iCloud, but the option that caught my eye is the fact that we can save the image as a 16-bit file. That way we can maintain the image's original bit depth. 
Another really cool thing that was supposed to work on raw power as well, but for me at least it never worked, is the ability to save the adjustments on the raw file in the camera roll. It's a non-destructive operation, so if we load the image again, we can either completely erase the adjustments or further refine our changes. But most importantly, unlike raw power, the image can be opened without any issues in Photoshop and in any other application. With raw power, I had the problem that if I modify the image, not even the photo app could open it. This is not the case with Pixelmator Photo. Another cool thing is the ability to batch process a set of images. So you can apply your color adjustments on all images without having to dial in the same values over and over. Especially useful if we have a series of photos from the same location. Finally, the other big benefit of Pixelmator Photo is simply the price. The application is not only good, but it's also very affordable. It only costs 5 euros and 50 cents, so it's quite a bit more affordable than Lightroom and a little bit less expensive than Affinity Photo. I would say Affinity Photo is a good tool to have in your creative toolbox since you can use it for several things, but when it comes to photo editing, I think Pixelmator Photo has no competition. It's powerful, has a great workflow, and it's super cheap. Of course, that doesn't mean it cannot be improved. My list of improvements though isn't that long, but there are some things I would like to see in a future update. The first one is a small thing, but still nice to have. It would be great if we could hide the filter section at the bottom of the screen. For me at least, it just clutters the interface and it's not really worth taking so much valuable space. It's very handy to be able to store your adjustments in a preset, but there's no reason to constantly have this bottom row visible all the time. Another thing that would be nice to have is the ability to save a PSD file with all adjustments to the image's adjustment layers. That would be absolutely great and would allow for further manipulation if needed in Photoshop. And finally, a small UI adjustment. In almost every settings panel, we have the ability to reset to the default values. That is a nice and quick way to go back to the defaults in case the adjustments went too far. I use this feature all the time, but I think it could be enhanced even further. In the adjustments block that have multiple color adjustments like in the color balance block, it would be great if we could also have reset buttons for each individual channel. I found myself multiple times wanting to reset just the shadows or the midtones instead of the whole thing. That would definitely save a lot of time compared to individually zeroing out every value. Other than that, I didn't feel like anything else is needed. It's a really well done app. It might just be me, but I think a lot of people will feel the same way. So give it a try and let me know what you think in the comments below. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.